guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're out here in Middleton, Tennessee. Really gloomy day. You can see on the truck it's a little wet. We were hoping for better weather. It said it wasn't supposed to rain this morning, but we gotta deal with what we got. Today I have a brand new F-350. You can tell by the bubble headlights here. That's just the biggest standout to me. It's on big old wheel and tire setup with the newer Furies, the MT2s, I believe. This thing just going down the road will blow your mind. It's so nice and refreshing to see F250s and F350s looking good again. The old aluminum duties just looked all copy and paste, and we finally have a new body style starting to pop up in the show scene, and I'm looking forward to going to all the shows this year and seeing them. Today I got Brad here with me. What's going on, guys? My name is Brad Kilman. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Chrome Caddy. I've got this 23 F350 Platinum. Got about 5,000 miles on it because I actually use what I build. I always love driving it. I always like to make sure it's used. So I'm just gonna have Brad walk around the truck here and point out what he has done to it. Just tell us more about the truck. You ain't had it too long, it's pretty new, so you ain't got many stories with it. So I haven't had too long, looking forward to taking it to a few more shows. Before this one, I had a 2024 20, GMC Denali. Love the truck, very cool, latest thing out. However, the wheels and tire size, it's a little awkward about like trying to get it in there. The lift kit, not super tall. So I went with the opposite, got me a 23 F350. On this truck here, I put a uh, 4 to 17 inch lift any level. It's the latest one out. I got it powdered all metallic black on it. Also, if you look down here, I've got the latest Fury Tires MT2 on it. It's a 44, 16 and a half R30. And also I got with it your 30 by 16 Liberty Forge. Latest design out. And of course, it does spin. So with this one too, I also went through paint match all the chrome got that deleted on there as you can tell the truck sits super high i've got the fold out steps with it too from factory so that's pretty handy i want to thank some of my guys at dba automotive they've hooked me up with the uh with the wheel lights they, those are our switchbacks the latest ones out they're the five row i've also got about 18 rock lights on here they're the 32 led so super bright. Dallas over at DBA, he actually slowed down on how many we we're putting on there because they were actually bright enough. I hear a lot of guys having to put maybe 50, you know, 30 different rock lights on there with DBA. We're pretty set, you know, as far as having super bright rock lights. As you keep on going around the truck here, I want to shout out my guys at Two Brothers. Uh, they were the guys that were responsible for all the paint match here. They did a great job on the tail lights. Those look super good. On the Platinum, of course, wanted to make sure it stood out. So I got everything black except for the words platinum. So that's kind of the, some of the major things that have been done to the truck. So the headlights, I left them the same because you always take into, into those scenarios. Um, you always take into account possible leaks or anything like that. So I didn't want that to happen. But with the taillights, you know, want to make sure they, they blended right in. With this one we do, I know that one cool thing right now going on, they just came out with uh, Diesel R Corp, just came out with tuning on these. That is something I'm kind of looking into. I think that'd be pretty cool, but it's like a stock tune. It's not any major horsepower or anything like that. So do have that currently stock. But as far as the truck, that's kind of some of the major aspects that are going on currently. But I am looking forward to, as year progresses, doing a few more things to it. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to bring up. So whenever it comes to building a brand new truck like this, you have to wait on parts to roll out pretty much, don't you, for anything you want to do to it. I'm surprised that any level was able to be made for this so quickly. Oh yeah, so it definitely takes a while to build a truck like this. It takes some time. You know, ordering just the wheels alone, thankfully Liberty does get them out pretty quick. It was about a six week turnaround on these 30s, even with the with the black powder and mill. So they definitely get the wheels out really quick. The lift kit itself took a couple weeks to get on. Of course, it was the, one of the very first four to 17 inch lift kits that was put on by any level. So there's definitely a little bit of learning and stuff like that as they're, they're working on these 20s three new body style. Come down to the small details of a truck. I pay a lot of attention to. You see so many trucks at shows, it comes down to the small things to make or break a truck. This black tag, how do you get a black tag in Tennessee? I haven't okay. seen it at the DMV. Okay, so I stay on the internet a lot. I see a lot of things pop up, a lot of trends. That is one thing that I saw that popped up. Um, so it is, it's an option you can get through uh, through the Tennessee DMV. I was just at the DMV and I was looking for one and I didn't see it there. I need to get back on my ag tags because I have white, but on the black builds, having a black plate, I've been seeing all around Tennessee. I like it a lot. Just got done with B-roll. I can't lie. He is not afraid to play with this any level. It has been going up and down for the last 10 minutes straight. Finally done sitting here looking at it, looking pretty. I'm taking a ride in it. I have not rode in this body style of F-250 or F-350. I'm very excited to see how it rides.
I think. I don't know. 22 in the 22, um, they had a little bit more like rectangle shape. It was a little bit smaller, but it's still pretty big. On this one though, it definitely it's quite a bit bigger. So with this one, there's a lot of features. It's a lot of sensors that are in it. That's one major thing I don't like about my truck compared to the other 22. Um, but it's still an awesome truck. There's just so much technology put into this one. But let's take a ride. I don't know if this trim is new to this body style in particular, but I love it. There's a lot of detail, a lot of um, leather work that's in this truck, as well as a lot of extra stitching compared to the 22, of course. Is the Platinum the very top of the line trim? Platinum, there is a lot of, a lot of questions about that. There's actually one more level up, which is the Limited. Um, that divs does give a few more options, a little bit different leather color. The new ones have like a slate and a blue color trim on the inside. The, with the Platinums, you can get either a brown or this black color that I like. I'm an all black on black. Black exterior, black interior, so this is my style. I love what you did with the wheels because it's not all black. You still have the cutouts where it's, what is it brushed? So it'd be milled. It's a black and milled um, livery. They uh, they suggested that. Like say, I like black on black, so I was gonna go with an all black. With this one, we wanted to do milled just to let it stand out a little bit more and definitely show off all those nice cuts on that Liberty Forge wheel. I think it also goes great with like the small details. Like even in here, you know, it's not black on black. It's black with some lighter details and what you did with the platinum on the tailgate, leaving that cut out not 100% black for sure right now a lot of them um, a lot of these any levels and, and bigger trucks where it's so hard to get the new body style there's a lot of lariats there's a lot of some of them are XLTs even gas trucks so wanted to make sure I stood out just a little bit having that platinum seven uh, six seven so um, that was one of the major reasons to let you know to get on the paint match to get just stand out a little bit is that a moonroof so with this one with the Fords um, they do come panoramic That is big. It's not done yet. <laughs> I've never seen this at a truck before. Yeah, that's clean. That is one thing when building trucks to take into consideration with these, they are prone to leak. Um, I have quite a few buddies that have the bigger lifted trucks and they do have a few problems with leaks. I personally have never had a problem, so I'm gonna stick with keeping that sunroof. But a lot of people, I don't know about your truck, but a lot of people, they do do the, uh, um, starlight that's on them. Yeah. Um, I've had that one on my 2019 Cummins that I built. That one I really enjoyed. It was about 1,000, 1,100 stars done through the powder shack. I even had some shooting stars, stuff like that. You can check it out on my Instagram, of course. What is your Instagram at again? My Instagram tag is at chrome underscore caddy. Been doing it for quite a while. Had tons of fun building a lot of trucks, a lot of cars, and a lot of great friends through it. That's the reason I ask again, is because I was looking on your page, you know, when I first messaged you wanting to film this behemoth of a vehicle. It's insane. I love it. You had a chrome Cadillac, and that's where that came from. Can you tell us more about that? I did. So, I, you know, you got to build what you like. You got to build something that stands out and have fun with it. So, I did a, uh, I had a 2016 Cadillac Escalade. That's kind of where everything originated. I did on that that one, man, it has been a while. I did 24s, dub 24s. I did 305 or 295 Nitto tires, a razor rack, roof rack, twisted pro lights all over. Did Avery rose gold chrome. That definitely stood out. However, when I did go to sell that car, it didn't really sell that well. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think a pink chrome vehicle would be what most people are looking for in particular to sell. But, you know, someone who likes to customize vehicles like ourselves i think it's really cool that that was even made so with that one the fun part about that was the reason why i enjoyed that car so much is because it did stand out it definitely stood out at the shows which gave me opportunity to meet many companies many friends networks so that's why i say too you got to stand out a little bit and do something different that nobody else does rose gold wasn't my number one color choice it opened doors for me is is the short of it now was that the first vehicle you like fully customized and I modified think, i think so i put about twenty two thousand dollars in that car so back then i was like that was that's crazy so but with this truck actually i think we're at I mean, the lift kit alone was was close to forty five thousand dollars. Now, is that with installed? That is. That's out the door through any level. Of course, you know, there's always price adjustments and things like that. So always double check with any level. They'd be happy to get you an out the door estimate. Yeah, that's kind of what you're looking at for the new four to seventeen inch any levels. Now, what vehicles have you been through since that Cadillac? Since it was your first vehicle that you built? Yeah. So since that one, there was <laughs> there's been quite a few. Um, I've had a handful. Of, so I did my Cadillac Escalade turn around and did a fifth gen Cummins. Um, that was a great truck. Uh, you know, it's that's always gonna be like my favorite truck just because 
so many memories and stuff having that as my first major diesel you know newer diesel truck that I modified I've had a 1997 73 that one was a cool truck definitely keeping it old school with that one I've had a handful of 2022 f250 350s and 450s I've customized them done different things to them of course you can check it out on Instagram and then I've had a Raptor I've had a GT500 I've had lately 24 GMC Denali um, as I mentioned earlier that that one was uh, it was a little different coming from a straight axle and then now going to a, a GM setup yeah the independent suspension yeah, definitely a fun it was a very nice ride but like I say the stuffing 24s under it or stuffing wheels under it was just a little difficult especially with the lift kit options very limited compared to Cummins and, and Power Stroke me personally I'm a big GM guy I love Mine's the OML, but I love the L5Ps. Just anything 2014 and up, I love that body style in general. But the only issue with GM vehicles, it is so hard to fit anything under them unless you can completely clear the fender well somehow, which is, it'd be a big lift to do that. And on an independent suspension, you can't really do that anyways. It's hard to make a huge lift on it. The big GM vehicles that you see built, most of them are straight axle swap, which that is a lot of work in itself. I don't think I would do that. But I am thinking about four-link swapping the rear so I can bag it. Now, what's your opinion on bags like a Kilderman versus any level. Be honest, any level in my opinion is definitely superior compared to any other lift kit brand. I've had quite a few static lifts. I've actually never had a bag truck, um, but I don't think I ever will, at, especially after this any level. This any level is just so comfortable. The ride quality, um, everything. I've had a lot of buddies that have had bag trucks and the bags usually end up popped or they have to replace them. There's so much wear and tear that go into them. They dry rot pretty easy too. Oh yeah. So with the, uh, the any level, you know, as far as that side of things, that's a Eliminated. So, and with any level, you can be any height at any time. With bags, you you're kind of limited to your to your ride heights and such. Now, uh, with you being on such a big lift and wheel and tire setup, what mileage do you get with this thing? So, with the mileage, I'm probably looking at like 18 miles per gallon. So, and I've put some miles on it. As I mentioned, I've put about 5,000 miles on miles on it so far. Now, my daily is a Ram 1500 and that a 2012 Ram 1500, and that thing probably gets like nine miles per gallon. <laughs> yeah. These trucks, uh, they're they're pretty efficient. What well, size tires are these again? So these are 44s, 44s and 30s. And you're getting 18 miles a gallon. That's really impressive. And it's not deleted. No, no. The only thing I don't like on them so far, other than all the sensors and everything, which are, it's a double-edged sword as far as good and bad death how much death this thing drinks with my 22s i never had it took forever it felt like to fill them up as far as death it felt like the 22s like didn't drink it as fast these 23s it feels like it like it just takes it all the other thing is on the sensor like on the screen it'll show for like, like as soon as it hits like five or eight hundred miles it will not stop dinging it'll instantly be dinging that i have to fill up death with this being brand new it obviously probably comes with a warranty with you lifting it so high and doing all this does it void the warranty kind of kind of <laughs> <laughs> so of course with all the rules and everything they had you have to prove you know what what's causing the issues but in general as long as you have a really good relationship with your local dealership you know you can you can get by and have things fixed basically make good friends with them tell them hey i am gonna lift this thing to the sky it's gonna be moving up and down while i'm on the road and maybe you'll get by with it so have you had any issues out of it since you've had it so as far as any issues or anything like that no not really i mean it's a smooth ride it's really comfortable no major issues yet i know you said you have a daily driver but how often do you drive this truck i drive it all the time i build my trucks to drive I always use them, especially with my 450s. I work a property management and development job. So I was always using that thing. I use my 450 even on 28s and 38s on an 8 inch lift through McGoy's, Liberty, and Fury. That that thing I always used for, for my job. Hauling stuff, taking different things. So I always want to make sure the trucks are usable, and that's why I definitely stand behind any level. Now, would you take this truck on a road trip, or would you like. So I know you go to quite a few shows, or do you trailer at the shows? I've never trailered. The only thing I've ever trailered was my Escalade just because I had my Cummins and my Escalade at the same time. can't like take them both, you know, like you can't just drive them both. So that was the only exception to kind of my philosophy of being able to drive everything. But yeah, I've driven ever since then, all these other vehicles, I've always driven them everywhere, all to the shows and everything. Even this truck, I took straight to any level. That's where most of the mileage came from was a thousand miles there and a thousand miles back. I do plan on going to OBI Center. Will you be going to OBI? Definitely. I'll be, I'll be in the Liberty Forge booth in there. Always. That's the booth that I'm always in. 
Yeah. OBI, I think, over the last two years has turned into my favorite show overall compared to any of the others. It's just a great town, great scenery, and the show itself, being at the wharf, is really cool. Technically banned from OBI right now. <laughs> You're banned. <laughs> yeah. The Chappie was with me for that. Well, I've got to hear the story now. So as you know, I do videography, and I had a lot of shoots. I was like booked out. The whole weekend I was filming, I don't know if you know the gas station when you pull left out of the wharf. There's like an empty lot across the road from it. was no entrance to the lot. It was nothing but curb. But I had nothing but lifted trucks to film so we could all hop the curb. I was filming there the whole weekend. They didn't say a word to me. The last shoot I did had three trucks there at once. Someone called the cops on me, and they pull up angry. Take my license. Apparently the wharf owned that property like a mile down the road, and I'm banned from the wharf for a year. So technically the last day, I'm still gonna go to OBI. Like if I need to, I can get in touch with the owner. Technically I'm banned from the wharf till the last day of the show. Now, do you ever tour with any level like while you're driving? When I first got my my first any level, which was a 22 F450, it was the zero to 13 inch lift kit. So not as big as this one. It was on 42s also, but it was on 26s. Um, again, I wanted to make it usable and things like that. Before I got it, they said uh, any level told me they're like, you're gonna be playing with it. You know, you're gonna be going up and down down the road. Just just be gentle with it. No, I'm only gonna raise it like if I'm at the show or anything like that. No, I was like down the street as soon as I got it. As soon as I passed the semi, every time I wanted to see, you know, going up and down beside them at any speed, at wherever you are, any level, any times, just like their slogans. Well, me and him were growing up looking at trucks. We were looking at OBS Chevys on 22s with the truck nuts hanging off the hitch, and that was like the coolest, baddest thing. And who would have thought 14 wides and way more than 14 wides now is what we're rolling with. So, do you simply ride with it all the way up, or is there like a set ride? So with any level, it just depends on like your wheel and tire size. Being as I have the biggest stuff out on the market right now, kind of limited to how far you can go down. Now, one of the things I've been really interested in doing is getting a set of Liberty Forge 26 by 16s and getting some Fury 35. And I think that'd be a cool setup to be able to switch out with my 44s. With so. any level, you could have a smaller wheel and tire setup and then literally lower your truck on command and have a whole different look. With this thing riding all the way up and on 44s, it rides surprisingly well. It feels so weird just being in a truck that's able to go up and down. Uh, and this any level does ride better than the first Illumina Duty I filmed. They're the same lift pretty much, so it has to come down just simply it's a newer vehicle. Uh, if you haven't watched that video yet, go check it out. It was the body style before this on any level, similar setup to this. So to compare the brand new to the pretty new and just the difference in the body styles, go check out that last video. All right, I can't approve riding in the brand new any level. It rides so well. It's so cool seeing a huge diesel truck just going up and down. A little press of a button. I definitely want to shout out Liberty Forge. They've been great to me they always hooked me up with a set of wheels db automotive they always got it super bright now they've come out with those new switchbacks on those on those wheel lights and i can't thank you enough for coming out here for an hour but i gotta take rollers to see this thing rolling down the road is a whole different story so let's go check it out See him at Blake's show and OB y'all. Make sure to come say what's up. Thank y'all so much for watching. Like I said in the last video, I can't thank y'all enough for any love I'm getting on the channel. From the bottom of my heart, anyone supporting this channel, I cannot thank y'all enough. It means the most to me. Support my dream. I can't wait for 2024. It's gonna be a big year for Drift Visuals as a whole. Blake's show is next weekend. Then the week after that, we have OBI. Nothing but content, content, content. Constantly grinding for y'all. Again, I can't thank y'all enough. I'll see y'all in the next one.